Hello and welcome to Weather 2. My name's Jeff, I'm glad you're here. Let's just jump right in. This is the second video in the weather series. And by the end of this video, you'll be able to click refresh and have a weather forecast populated right into the Excel grid. So let's just head right into Excel. Exercise one. In this exercise, I basically just wanna show you the plan of what we're gonna do. Basically, we're gonna get the weather forecast in two steps. The first step is we're gonna give it the latitude and longitude, and this service is gonna return the weather forecast URL. Then we're gonna take that weather forecast URL and retrieve the actual forecast. First of all, let's just look to see what this API does. Let me click it and open it in a web browser. So when I open that URL in my browser, I get back this JSON string with a bunch of cool information. And if I scroll down, what I can see is there's actually a forecast URL. And when we call that URL, that's when we get the actual forecast. Just to show you what that looks like, let me copy that and paste it into my web browser. Okay, so this is what it returns. And if we scroll down, we can find that there's a forecast for today, tonight, Monday, Monday night, and you get the idea. So let's get all this stuff loaded directly into Excel. And let's go to the next exercise, exercise two. So basically what we wanna do is we wanna start with that base URL and then combine it with the latitude and longitude. Now in the first weather video, I showed how we can use the geography data type to enter in a city and state and have it return the latitude and longitude. If you missed it, you can check that out, it's weather one. So once we have that, we're gonna combine the base URL with the latitude and longitude. To do that, we're gonna use concatenation. I'm gonna use the concat function, there's other options. And I wanna start with this comma, and I want to join it with the latitude, comma, and then the API is expecting a comma separator. So we're going to enclose the comma in quotes, comma, and then we want to join in the longitude, close function and enter. And let's just make sure this looks about right. So we have the base URL with the latitude and a comma and the longitude. Okay, that's perfect. Now to get that into Power Query, what we're going to do is we're going to select that cell and we're going to name it. And the way that we're gonna name it is we're gonna to head to the name box. And there's a few different ways to name a cell. And I'm gonna call this weather URL and enter. And now to get that available inside Power Query, what we're gonna do is select data, and we're gonna use this from table range icon. And that loads this value into Power Query. The problem is it automatically changed the data type and used this promoted headers command. I'm just gonna remove that and that. Perfect. Now I'm going to right click and I'm going to select drill down and that's going to make that value directly available in other queries, which is going to be very helpful in a moment. Now I'm actually going to just copy that for future reference. In the meantime, I'm going to go to home, close and load two, and I'm going to say, I want to return that as a connection only query. And then I'm going to click OK. And now let me close this. So now what happens is we enter in a new city and state. The geography data type returns the new latitude and longitude. That's combined with the base weather URL, and now that's available inside Power Query. And by the way, during any of these exercises, if you hit the Power Query firewall error, this is the setting to ignore that error for this specific workbook. And I'll show that when we get into Power Query next. But now that we have the weather URL inside of Power Query, let's go ahead and get the forecast URL and then the forecast. Let's go to the next exercise, exercise three. Let's go to data from web. And for now, I'm just gonna paste in that weather URL. And we'll replace that for the one that Power Query returns in a moment and click OK. Okay, and I'm just gonna rename this and I'm gonna call this forecast URL. Okay, so now what we wanna do is this is the value that is returned from the weather API. We wanna open it as a JSON. And now we can navigate this using Power Query. So you can feel free to check out this list or the geometry record. The one we want right now though is the properties record. So I select that to drill in. And now I can see this forecast URL and that's what we need to get the actual forecast. So I'm gonna right click that and I'm gonna drill down. And for now, I'm gonna go ahead and copy this. And in a minute, we'll substitute that out. So let's go to home, close and load two. And we wanna send this to a connection only query and I'm gonna click okay. Now we've created the weather URL and made it available in Power Query. We use that to get the forecast URL and make that available to Power Query as well. Now we need to get the actual forecast. So once again, I'm gonna to go to data from web and I'm gonna paste that static URL and we're gonna come in and replace that with a dynamic URL in a moment and click OK. So Power Query has retrieved the data. We wanna open it as JSON. 
we're going to drill into the properties record and the periods list. And now we're going to convert that to a table. And we're going to just accept the defaults and click OK. Now we're going to use this icon to expand. And I'm going to uncheck use original column name as prefix. And then I'm going to click OK. And now we have our basic forecast. So now we can just pick and choose which columns we want to send back to Excel. So I'm going to remove the number column. The end time is daytime. Let's scroll over. I do want temperature. I don't need temperature units. Scroll over. I don't need temperature trend, probability of precipitation, although you can pick and choose anything you'd like. I'll take out this icon column. I'll leave that short forecast and I'll take out the detailed forecast. But again, you can pick and choose whichever ones you want. And then I'm just going to remove those columns. Now to make this date look more like a date, I'm going to select that column, click transform, head to date and select parse. Okay, perfect. Now I'm just going to go file, close and load to, and I'm going to send it to a table in an existing worksheet and click OK. Okay. And let me close this and let's take a look. Now I have this forecast, which is perfect. The only thing we need to do now is replace those static URLs that we started with, with the dynamic counterpart. So let's click data, queries and connections, and let's double click forecast. We click on the source step, and this is the URL. It's showing right here in the formula bar. By the way, if you don't see the formula bar, just go to view, and then you can just check this formula bar checkbox, and then you'll be able to see it. And what we basically want to do is remove this whole URL, and we want to replace it with the forecast URL query results. And we can expand the left nav in case we need to remember what we called these other queries. So this is forecast URL. Now I should be able to hit enter and it should work. And as I scroll down, I can see that it does. If you get a yellow error that says there's a formula firewall error, what you do is go to file, options and settings, query options. And then in current workbook, click privacy and just select ignore. And I've already done it. That's why I didn't get the firewall error. Okay, now we can simply go home and close and load. Okay, and there we got it. So this is returning a forecast with our dynamic forecast URL. The only thing we need to do now is replace the forecast URL source with the weather URL. So let's go here and let's double click that to edit it. And once again, we click source and we delete this static URL and then we replace it with our dynamic URL, which we had called weather URL. And now I can hit enter and that looks good. And now we can go home, close and load. Okay. Now let's see if it works. So let me close this and let me just make a copy of this column. And I'm just going to paste special values right here, just so we have a reference point. Let's cruise back over here and let's change the location. Instead of Reno, Nevada, how about Fairbanks, Alaska? Hit enter. Okay. The geography data type updated the latitude and longitude. Let's go back here. Now, if everything worked, when I click refresh, we should get some new temperatures. They should be a little colder. Data and refresh all. There, there we got it. Okay, and as suspected, it is colder. And let's just go ahead and clear this out. So, in our current workbook, we can simply type in a city and state. The geography data type is going to get the latitude and longitude, which is going to be fed into the query which is going to then return this forecast for us. And all we have to do to update it is just click refresh all. And it just flows in from the internet right into our Excel workbook. That is pretty cool. Now, in our next video, we're going to convert this so that it shows the AM and PM temperatures with one column for each day. It's pretty cool. Hopefully this has been helpful. Thanks for joining me. Have a great day. Hey, Excel user. If you ever need to create summary reports, check out my pivot table for beginners video. It starts at the beginning and shows how to store the data transactions in a table and then how to summarize those transactions with a pivot table report. I hope it helps unlock the incredible power of pivot tables. This video is a production of Excel University. 